here upon a midnight dreary. Edgar sits, weak and weary, pondering over many a curious volume of forgotten lore. Tonight, though, is no night for prose. Instead, Edgar opens wide his box of crows. Crows is a tile-laying family strategy game. It's for two to four players. It plays in 45 minutes. And it's for players of all ages, 10 and up. It was designed by Tyler Sigmund and is published by Valley Games. Let's look at the components first. There are 53 tiles. You'll use these to build the board. There are also 20 special tokens. Those are the smaller tiles. The game also comes with 38 wooden crows. They come in two different shapes. In game terms, the shapes aren't important. They just look nifty. There are also eight shiny objects. You'll use one gem to attract crows during the game and the other to mark up your points on the scoreboard. Let's talk about the six regular board tiles. You'll use these tiles to create the board as you play. There are four tree tiles. There's a tree tile with one crow, one with two crows, one with three crows, and an empty tree with no crows at all. There's also a cemetery tile and a trinket tile with glittering goodies. There's one other board tile. Each player gets one, the trash tile, but we'll talk about it later. The shiny objects in this game are crow magnets. The crows can't resist them. The crows will flock and fly across the board to score you points. The five special tokens in the game allow you to break the normal rules just for one turn or they'll allow you to score extra points at the end of the game. To set up, we'll create a board by picking out nine random tiles and setting them in a diamond shape, leaving holes between each tile. Add wooden crows to any tree tiles that are revealed, one crow for each crow pictured on the tile. Stack up the rest of the face-down board tiles to form a draw pile, and you're ready to begin the game. A game of crows is played over several rounds, each game round has three parts. Player turns, crows fly, which triggers scoring, and then crows scatter, if necessary. On your turn, you place a tile, adding to the board, and then you place your shiny object on a tile. To place a tile, first you pick the top tile from the draw deck, then you may place it anywhere on the board so long as one edge of the tile is touching another tile. This means you can't place a tile off by itself, and you can't place a tile whose only connection is diagonal. That's part one of your turn. Part two is placing your shiny object. To do this, you simply place your shiny jewel on a single tile on the board, but there are a couple of restrictions to keep in mind. You can't place your jewel on a tile that already has wooden crows. You can't place your jewel on the trash tile and you can't place your jewel on a tile that already has one. So, players in turn play a tile and then place their jewel. Then the crows are ready to fly. Before the crows take off though, let's talk about the different types of tiles and how your jewel will help you score points. Remember there are seven types of tiles. Four of them have trees. Some trees are empty. Others have one, two, or three crows. When you place a tree tile with crows on the board, you place an equal number of wooden crows on that tile. So if you place a tile with two crows, you put two wooden crows on that tile. One crow on the tile, one crow on the board. Same thing with three. Now the cemetery tile doesn't have crows, but crows who land here later will score double points. The trinket tile has other glittering goodies on it. This tile will break ties during the scoring round when crows decide where they'll fly. Last, you have one trash tile at your disposal. 
The trash tile is the only tile that can distract crows from shiny things. If they fly over a trash tile, the crows must stop for a snack. The type of tile you draw will help you decide where you might want to play it to the board and where you might want to place your shiny object as well. Now we're ready for the second part of the game round. Crows fly and players score points. Remember the shiny objects on the board are like crow magnets. The crows will flock to them flying in straight lines, horizontally or vertically. Crows will always fly to the jewel that is closest to them, but they won't fly over gaps or holes in the board. Think of it this way. Each crow looks right, looks left, then forward and backward, and then decides which direction to fly, always choosing to fly straight at the closest shiny object. Let's look at some examples. These two crows have a jewel right next to them. They'll flap right over and land right there. These two crows here won't fly over the gap on the board to the red jewel, so they'll fly down this column to the green jewel instead. These four crows are caught between two jewels. In this case, two go one way and two go the other. Now, if one of those two jewels had been on a trinket tile, all of the crows would have flocked to the trinkets. Remember, the trinkets break ties. Last, these three crows spy the dreaded trash tile. Instead of landing on the red gem, all three crows stop on the trash tile for a snack. Now scoring points is super easy in this game. Simply count the number of crows on your shiny object and score that number of points. Three crows, three points. The cemetery tiles though allow you to really cash in. If your jewel is on a cemetery, each crow that lands there scores double. So five crows who flock to your treasure will score you a whopping 10 points. Now, after everyone has scored, there's a chance a murder of crows may need to scatter. This is the third and final step of each game round. Now, when we say murder, we're not talking about killing anyone. A murder is simply the name for a flock of crows. A murder forms when at least six crows end up in the same tile at the end of a turn. When this happens, and it will, the crows will scatter. First, take two crows off the board. Then, in a spiral pattern, drop one wooden crow onto each tile surrounding the gem. If you have a lot of crows, continue the spiral out to a second loop. Do this for each murder that forms around a jewel at the end of a round. Some turns you may not have a murder, in which case you simply skip this step and start a new game round. At this point, it's lather, rinse, and repeat. Each game round proceeds in the same fashion. Play tiles, place jewels, then crows fly, score, and scatter. Once the stack of board tiles is gone, the game ends and the player with the most points wins the game. Now there's one additional wrinkle to the game, the special tokens. If you place your jewel on an empty tree, you receive a random special token. You may play one once a turn, the tokens add a small but fun element of luck to the game. Two tiles allow you to change how crows will fly, helping or hindering their movement. Two tiles have to do with cemeteries, granting or removing their bonus points. Crows is fast, fun, and easy to learn. The game offers challenging decisions on every turn. And because the crows constantly move and scatter, it takes some clever planning to gather a big host of birds. With the random mix of tiles, the board can be built in thousands of configurations, meaning Crows also offers a tremendous amount of replayability. So, the next time you hear that tapping, gently rapping at your chamber door, you won't need to invite your feathered friend in, he'll come of his own accord. It's the shiny objects, you see. They can't resist. Offer him a game of Crows and like Edgar, you'll entice him down from his perch, a worthy pet, and a player evermore. <laughs>